Okay, for part of this video, I've uh, basically just uh, reset the uh, controller and um, just because I want to get the names all back to black, the simplest way to get everything back to, to how it was. Plugged it into the power bar, it detected the power bar just as you saw before. Everything is there. I just, the names are no longer there because I'm going to be now messing around with plugs and stuff and this is just the simplest way to do it. I don't want any of the timers or anything I set before. So here we go. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to first get out the uh, temperature gauge, the temperature uh, probe. And uh, I have that over here. And uh, get the end of it here. And it plugs in. To, you can plug it into any one of these. Uh, ports you have two on each power bar and once that's plugged in the controller should detect it and it's detected a new device and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press it's saying 28.8 degrees Celsius and I'm gonna just press OK and it's added as a new widget here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a level um, gauge so I have my level gauge here and straight out of the pack and I'm gonna plug it in and these can only go in one way so you don't have to worry and that's in and it should be detected good that's detected and I'm gonna press OK so now I have it called live 2 or level 2 and temperature so those two are connected and we're good to go so next I'm gonna get another probe and by the way this is how you do it with the Acrotronica systems one thing at a time first the power bar then you can do anything any other thing you want to do but one at a time um, so I did the, the first the temperature then the level now I'm going to plug in a pH probe and we'll see that one be detected okay for any standard aquatronica probe you need three things the probe the interface module the four things actually the casing which covers over the BNC connector here and you need the USB cable so having all four of those things here at my disposal I'm going to now show you um, how you hook them up and uh, get them going so first thing I'm going to do is get this uh, USB cable which I left over there and I have that here and first you just want to screw on the BNC connector it locks in like that All right. next open the bag put the parts here um, this is a wall mount unit so that you can hold that you can clip the thing on that would normally go like this you would well, you put in your two screws into your wood or whatever that you have for the backing and then this clips on like this and it holds it so if you want to take it off you can just take it off this remains on thing you get the screws then you get some sizing you get some little sizing washers here and uh, basically, I don't know, I guess the smallest one here for this. Put it on to the cable like that. Um, one side of this goes on like this. The washer fits into this little slot you'll see. the time getting it into that little slot maybe it's because I need to use a bigger washer um, 
probably use this one. Fit that over it. Fit this into the slot. And then the top goes over. And it should click together like that. And there you have it totally secured. Next, USB cable. So you're going to hook up your USB cable to it. And that just plugs straight in. Just make sure you watch the direction per typical any USB cable. And that's that. And these other components, you can put them aside till you're ready for mounting. So basically there you have the full setup there for any one probe. And it's the same. I won't bother to show you for the others. It's exactly the same setup for every probe. So next thing you want to do is plug it in to a USB slot and I'm going to do that. But first let me set back up the controller so you can see what's going on. Okay, I have um, the, the um, PH probe connected up to the interface and I'm going to plug it into the USB port here and that's in and it should be detected and yes it detected it and it says S01 sensor board and PH 5.37 and we just press OK and that's now added into the widgets and let me do the same thing for the other probe I'm going to hook up the um, the redox probe uh, and I'm going to hook up the salinity probe so next I think I'll do the salinity first and I won't bother showing you this because um, just the detection part and that'll be that because uh, you see how to build the casings and stuff okay I have the uh, conductivity probe assembled um, and I'm gonna plug that in now it's plugged in Waiting for it to detect. And it detected it. Okay, density probe. Press OK. And the density probe is there. And you can see that right here. Okay. Do the, the next one, um, which is the ORP probe, and see what and um, connect that one up. Um, before I go and uh, set the level, let me set one more power unit. Go back in the power units, and I'm gonna change the name on one more of them. So I'll pick the fourth one here, or the fifth one I should say, E, and I'm going to name this um, R O Pump. So that would be the pump that you would use, or the uh, solenoid you would use. You could you call it RO, RO solenoid, RO pump, depending on what you're using uh, to put RO water into your tank 
to compensate for uh, low water level in your sump and press OK. So that's just one more named and go back into the main menu now. Okay, so now I'm going to deal with uh, naming the level sensor and set that one up uh, for our water level. And uh, here you see the the unit. Sorry, it doesn't have the shield on it. Uh, it's just the raw thing. I haven't put the shield or the uh, the holder on. But uh, if it was down like this, that would be low water in the sump. If it was up, the sump would be fine. Okay. So keep that in mind here. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to go to level here. And I'm going to first change the name on this sensor. And I'm going to call it Sump. level and press OK so now you can see the name has changed to sump level now if you notice it uses that live 2 and if I go this way it'll go to live 1 um, as some uh, translation thing it doesn't really matter but level 1 level 2 okay but the lovely thing about Aquatronica is that they give you these measuring units for even the levels. So you have your choices here, high, low, high, okay, okay, high, low, high, low, okay, okay, low. Now, in this case, what we want is live one to be low and live two to be okay, or level two to be okay. So we're going to pick low OK and then press OK over here so now when it's up it's OK if the water level drops down it shows low and that is programmed in the measuring units the way you need it you might need it in the reverse order for some other things where you want it to, to, to be high in one direction low in the other direction they, they give you your choices of how you want to set this up so great there um, next thing I want to do is set an alarm an alarm is basically going to be like a program in this case um, I'm going to press alarm I'm going to select this same level sensor my only level sensor and it knows right away that it's an alarm I want so it's already put that into the first programming slot right you could you could do different things here and and change the programming to program for something else like a plug but since I'm here doing this this is the way you'd want to do it so I have that in there alarm I don't need to use the plus because it's already added it I just go next and I pick sump level is already the input selection is already sump level that's put in for you and now you have the reference value and I want the alarm to go off when it's low now this time filters a uh, little bit of translation thing here it's basically like a hysteresis where the unit um, will only respond and set off an alarm after a certain amount of time has passed now if your sump is turbulent and occasionally the uh, float switch is going up and down uh, you, you definitely don't want to leave that at zero because then you'll get it going off and on, off and on the alarm. The other thing is when your RO water kicks in, um, you, you don't want to get an alarm and then your RO water brings it up while the alarm is uh, going off. And then, of course, then the alarm will go off. But every time your sump goes low, you get an alarm. Um, so either way... Uh, I use a pressurized uh, three gallon tank and uh, when I get a low um, sump level basically within um, three to four seconds it's typically up and uh, I then have it send water for another additional probably 10 seconds 
so that, that the solenoid is not switching on and off too often. But since I know within within three to four seconds it'll typically um, correct itself, I want to just set that the alarm doesn't come on unless more than that length of time has passed. So I'll go in here and set this no hours, no minutes, and say five seconds. And I press OK. So there you see it there, set there, and you press next. And now you want the message. So if five seconds has passed and it's still low, I need to set a message. And the message I'm going to put is some level low and that's fine and now I want to know, it wants to know if you want sound notifications. And of yes, you want sound. So you take, you press that and there sound will come with it. So they'll get a beep when, when it's low. And I press next. And the timeout, you don't have to worry about that. It, yeah, you don't want the alarm, an alarm to timeout. Um, you want it to keep going so long as the sump is, is low. For other devices, you might need a program timeout, but not in, not in this case. So I press next. And now it's under the programs. And by the way, I should add, um, if I go into the menu and I go back, if I go into um, overview, I can see the devices that are hooked up to the unit right now. The power unit, the sump level, tank temp, pH density, and redox. And it, if there's more, you can scroll through through more of them as with pages. And go back to the first page. But also, under programs, there's the program that I just put in. And you can add in a program using this. You can highlight a program somewhere and then press the minus to erase it or you can edit it by using the pencil uh, unit here so this is selected already and if I press that I can see the program I put in sump level I just hit next because I'm just looking at it next right next alarm sound next and next okay so that was just showing you that you can edit any of the programs from that one um, widget so we we'll go back to the menu and basically now that is programmed and I will demonstrate that okay, so demonstrating that and you can see here sump level is okay I have it over here and that would be up high that the water was at the right level and if the water was to drop it goes low five seconds bang alarm sump level low and if I bring it back up the alarm goes so that's basically working fine Okay, I, I didn't name, I didn't bother to show you, I named the uh, temperature here a tank temperature because on uh, my tank I have two temperature probes. Uh, one is the outdoor temperature and one is the water temperature. Um, so I'm just going to go in and name the last uh, two that are left. Let's go to pH and change name. pH here and this would be tank
pH. Press OK. So that's the tank pH. And the reason I do that is because if I put this on my own system, I'd have another one here for the uh, calcium reactor pH. So I'd want to put a calc pH uh, there, and I need to distinguish which is which. So I'm just naming it here to show you because a lot of guys do have calcium reactors, um, and you want to know that. Or they have uh, auto water changing, and they want to know the pH of the water in the container that uh, is, is holding that water. So uh, they would have a second pH probe. So that's there and that's done. Um, name is changed and now tank we can set an alarm for this but I'm not gonna set the alarm just yet because in order to set if I set the alarm now it's probably just gonna go off wildly the probe has not been calibrated so um, next thing we want to do is probably calibrate the probe 